Joining me now, the author of the Jumpstart Our Businesses Startups Bill, the House Majority Leader, Eric Cantor. Uh, I'm cracking a joke about it, making fun of it, but it's been a long time since we've seen a 390 to 23 vote, a uh, big bipartisan vote in favor of this legislation. Uh, can we have more? We certainly hope so. I mean, this bill, I think, reflects uh, Congress actually beginning to come together, both sides trying to set aside differences and rally around what we know needs to happen, and that is to get entrepreneurs, small businessmen and women back into the game of job creation. And what the JOBS Act does, very simply, is it reduces the red tape that has been in the way for small business people, allows for the introduction of more startups. And that's the problem, John. We've seen over the last three years the number of startup businesses in America decline, and we know that most jobs in America come from small businesses. This is a way to jumpstart that again to see more jobs created and get this economy growing again. Now, the president has said he would sign this bill. The White House also says they would like some bigger, what they think are more bold jobs proposals passed. And I want you to listen here to the House Democratic leader, Nancy Pelosi. Uh, sure, she says this is good, but... It's because it's so meager. Trumpet. Tun -ta -da -ta. <laughs> Here comes the little king. This is, uh, <laughs> this is, uh, it, yes, and it's bipartisan. And when we uh, pledge the flag, that's a big thing. Uh, she doesn't seem to think too much of this. Well, I mean, you know what, she may, be, Nancy Pelosi may make fun and say it's meager, but it's not going to be meager and insignificant to the small business that will actually start up because of this and all the new jobs that are created because of this. And I'd like to ask her what she would say to the individuals who actually are going to get a job because of this. It's not too meager to them. So again, the kind of constructive attitude that we can take is let's begin to take steps together to actually solve problems. And that's what today was all about focusing on trying to do things for small business people, getting businesses started up again. And frankly, now I think the onus goes over to the Senate, and we hope that Leader Reid will take this bill right up and do as the president has asked us and get the bill to the president's desk as quickly as possible so we can be there to help small business startups. Especially in this campaign, your Republicans are fond of breaking out charts or breaking out past quotes from the president and saying, you said if we passed the stimulus bill, for example, unemployment wouldn't go above 8.1 percent. This is your legislation. Let's assume it gets through the Senate and the President signs it. Leader Cantor, if I call you back in six months, how many jobs will be created because of this legislation? You know, I, I'm, I am not prepared to even give you an, a number. What I can tell you is the bipartisan vote surrounding this bill reflects the common sense notion that if you make it easier, if you get rid of the red tape standing in the way of small business job creation, if you allow for small businesses to access capital, uh, you're going to see more small businesses start up. And there's some outside studies out there indicating uh, X number of, of jobs that will be created because of this. But I can assure you this is a positive step forward to create an environment to see more entrepreneurial activity and job growth come about. Let me close with a question, couple questions on other topics. Uh, you recently endorsed Mitt Romney, the former Massachusetts governor, and the former House Speaker who used to work in the chamber where you are now the leader. Uh, here, this was his reaction to that. I think uh, he goes around the country and he's legitimately collected most of the insiders. Uh, I like Eric Cantor, uh, but he is sort of quintessentially part of that same group. Are you quintessentially a Washington insider? Uh, I don't consider myself as such, no. And the reason why I endorse Mitt Romney is because he is the only individual in the race to put forward a bold pro-growth plan to create jobs. As we've just been talking, John, the Congress has decided it can rally around the one important message and the one important policy point that needs to happen, and that is we need to create an environment for the private sector job creators to kick into action. Mitt Romney understands it. He's the only man who's actually created jobs. He is the only candidate in the race, including the president, who has a track record of actually solving problems. Would you be comfortable with Speaker Gingrich as the nominee? I'm going to be comfortable uh, with Mitt Romney as a, as a nominee. I think he is going to be our nominee. I think just as Newt Gingrich would say he would support the Republican nominee, I would support uh, the, the Republican nominee. The House Majority Leader Eric Cantor, Virginia, sir, appreciate your time tonight. Thank you, John.